Hey everybody, how's it going? Today, we're gonna be going over and showing you how to install the Roadmaster crossbar style base plate kit here on your 2020 Ford Escape. So this is what our base plate kit is gonna look like when we have the arms installed and we're ready to hook up to our tow bar. You can see here we have some quick disconnect brackets actually bolted to the face of our plates here. So this is the configuration that's gonna be needed when we get ready to hook up to our motorhome so we can easily attach the tow bars. But when we're not towing, we actually have a nice hidden sleek design because these arms here are easily removable. Now in order to remove them, we're gonna to come to the inside here. You're gonna have this nice ring here, which you can use to pull the pin free. And once you do that, you'll simply just rotate them over and then you can move them straight out. So this is essentially what our base plate kit is gonna look like. We don't have the arms installed. So pretty much how it's gonna look when we're driving around town. As you can see here, everything's pretty sleek, flush with the bumper, it doesn't stick out too much. Our safety chain tabs over here do stick out a little bit, but we need those two in order to prevent the safety chains from rubbing on our fascia. But aside from that, everything has a nice hidden look. So on either side of our base plate kit here, we're gonna have these slots that we use to insert our removable arms. We're also gonna have these safety chain tabs What's gonna be a little bit harder for you guys to see is the included electrical connector mounting bracket. So we have our electrical connector mounted like so. Behind this, there's gonna be two little poles on each side. These are connected directly to the cross beam of the base plate kit and they allow us to mount a six pole or even a four pole electrical connector like we have shown. So what I really like about this is everything's integrated into the mount for the base plate kit. You don't have to worry about drilling into your bumper or using any separate brackets. Everything is gonna be one nice convenient package. So I'm sure you guys have already noticed this, but all of our components for our base plate kit have a nice durable black powder coated finish. Now I will say something that stands out about this particular powder coat in comparison to some of the other one, it is super rugged and durable. I mean, you can really beat on these things without having to worry about losing your finish, especially these safety chain tabs here, they get a lot of wear and use. So you can worry about, you don't have to worry about your base plate kit rusting and corroding over time due to that durable finish. So when we are ready to tow, it's super easy to set up. We'll simply take one of our removable arms here. We'll come at an angle. We'll press it into place until this pin depresses back. And then we'll just simply rotate it over till it locks into place. We'll simply do that on both sides. Then we can take our tow bar now we're just gonna line up our connections here. We'll do that on both sides. Then we'll insert our locking pin. And then aside from the safety cables hooking those up, our electrical connector and possibly a breakaway switch, we'd be ready to hit the road. So in regards to compatibility, we're gonna be okay with Roadmaster tow bars that use this quick disconnect system here. However, if you have another brand, there's also adapters that allow you to use those as well. So in regards to installation, this one is actually not too bad. And believe it or not, there's not any major modifications we need to make to our vehicle to get this installed. We actually only have to drill one hole per side. But aside from that, everything's pretty much bolt on. We have to make a few minor cuts to our bumper fascia but that's pretty much it, fairly straightforward. Let's go ahead and jump into that installation now. So to start our installation, we need to open the hood on our vehicle. We're gonna be coming inside here to the front portion of the engine bay. We're gonna have this little shroud here, this panel goes over the radiator. We need to remove four fasteners here with a 10 millimeter socket to loosen this panel from the radiator support. So now we're gonna jump underneath the vehicle here. You can see we have this plastic skid shield. It's held in place with several of these torque screws. We'll take a T30 Torx bit. We'll go ahead and remove those all so we can take off our panel. So now directly behind our splash shield here, we're gonna have our skid panel. We need to remove that as well. We're gonna have several of these screws here on the outside edges. We'll take these out using a seven millimeter socket. So 
So now we're gonna come inside to either wheel well here. We're gonna be removing a bunch of these little plastic pushpin fasteners here that hold this fender liner fabric to the actual fascia. Now there's gonna be several of them and they're different sizes here along the inside edges of the wheel well. We'll be using a combination of a flathead screwdriver and a trim panel tool to remove these all. So you're gonna to wanna to start down below and work your way up. And it may also be a good idea to go ahead and pay attention to where you're removing these since there are different sizes. There's one out and this is what they look like. Now we'll go ahead and get the rest out here and repeat that same process on the other side. So once we get all of our pushpin fasteners removed, we're gonna take our fabric here. We're gonna pull it outside the flanges here on the bumper. And the reason we need to do that is there's actually an additional screw that's sort of up here. It attaches the uh, fascia to the fender here and it goes up at an angle like this. We can't really show you, but you're gonna need to get a tool, preferably a swivel socket up in there. You should be able to feel for it in this area, but you'll need a 10 millimeter socket. And just do the best you can to remove that. And that's what it looks like there. So before we begin removing the fascia, I'm gonna take some painter's tape here. I'm just gonna tape up our two painted edges here. That way when, when, we're, when we're removing and installing the fascia, we don't have to worry about them coming into contact and damaging the paint. So now we're gonna to come to either side here. We're gonna take our black plastic fender trim molding. We're just gonna simply pull that out to release the clips. So when you get about here, we only need to go about halfway, I would say. We don't have to take it off entirely. You're gonna see some white clips here if we look down inside. So in order to release those clips, we're gonna take a trim panel tool, come in from the side here, and then we can pry those loose. So that should be good as far as how far we need to remove it out. So here's that white plastic clip we were talking about. And if yours popped out like ours did, it's not a problem. You can just simply take them and slide them back in the channel. So now we're ready to remove the actual fascia. We're gonna start over here on the passenger side. We're gonna peel back our fender lining here. We're gonna have a connector we need to remove first. So this is what it looks like. There's a center section here we need to depress, which will release the lock. And then we can just pull down here on that gray lever and it should release the connector. And there's the other end. So once we have our fasteners removed, we can go ahead and peel back our liner here. I like to just tuck it behind the wheel there to hold it in place. But we're gonna have two bolts. They sort of go in at an angle, or rather up this way, attaching the fascia to the fender. So there's gonna be one around this area here. It's gonna be one around here. You're not really gonna be able to see them. They're hard to even get a tool on there. But this is the configuration I'm using to get those. It's gonna be a 10 millimeter socket. These are what they look like, so just do your best to get those both out. So in order to remove the fascia, we're actually gonna be pulling downward and out and that's gonna release the clips here. You may need to stick a flat blade screwdriver in between the two panels to break a clip free. But now we're just gonna work our way to the other side. There's some clips up top we need to release as well. Now we can go ahead and set our fascia in a safe place. So the next thing we're gonna be doing is removing the air, the air dam housing. So in order to do that, we're gonna have a push pin fastener on either side as well as some clips around the perimeter. So we'll take a trim panel tool to remove these two push pin fasteners. Then we'll use our flat braid screwdriver to release the clips on the outside. So we're actually not gonna be reinstalling this plastic housing here. So I wouldn't be too concerned about damaging these clips here or the actual housing. But there we go. So now we're gonna jump over here to the driver's side. Now directly under our bumper beam on the driver's side, we're gonna have this little alert speaker. It's gonna be held in place with an eight millimeter bolt. 
I'm going to go ahead and remove that. And then we're actually going to remove the housing as well. So there's going to be a pigtail on the back, or a connector rather. We'll depress the center of it, and then we can pull out. What we're also going to want to do is pry the clip here that's holding the connector to this plastic housing. So just like that. So now directly beside that alert sensor we just removed, we're going to have two connectors here. We need to unplug them from one another. So we're going to start over here with this large rectangular one. There's going to be a tab there we're going to depress, and then we should be able to pull this lever down. And it'll sort of unclip itself there, but we can just pull straight out once we have that tab all the way in the open position. And now we'll remove this connector as well. So there's going to be a red locking tab. We're going to slide up and that will reveal a center section we can press down and then pull out just like that. And now we're actually just going to tuck these connectors here sort of inside that little pocket there. Now we're going to come to the outside here. We're going to have a 10 millimeter nut. It's again attaching for our computer bracket. We're going to go ahead and remove that. So once we get that nut removed, we're just going to press back on our housing here to remove the stud from the hole. So now we're going to come to the front of the vehicle at the bottom here. This is our ACC sensor. What we need to do is we're going to release the connector. So again, same with all these connectors, there's going to be a center section you depress and then pull out. And then we're going to go ahead and pry up all the wiring connectors that secure it to this bracket. So we got two on the bottom and then one on the side. We're going to go ahead and cut off all of these little connectors that secured it to the bracket. We won't need those. I'm going to be careful not to cut the wires. But once we get those all off, we're going to take an 8 millimeter socket and we're just going to loosen up a few of these bolts here. We don't need to remove them entirely, just enough to give us some room to work with. Because now what we need to do is, we need to take this connector here, we need to sneak it behind here. Actually, let's go over the top and then down through there and then we're going to pull it out the side here where our plug is. Looks like I need to loosen this a little more. And now once we have our plug out over here, I'm actually going to be plugging it back in to this housing here. Now we want to make sure that none of the wiring gets caught in our dampers here. So we're probably going to go ahead and secure the harness here with some zip ties. So now we have a radiator support bar here at the bottom. It's this black steel tubing. We use a 13 millimeter socket. We're going to have two bolts per side that we need to remove. So now up in this pocket here, we're going to have a nut. We need to go ahead and remove that here with a 15 millimeter socket. You're probably going to need a universal joint here to get to it. But we're going to have one on each side. We'll take them both out. So the next thing we're going to do, so the active air housing we have, the active air shutter housing, we're going to have these ribs on the outside of either side. We're going to go ahead and flush those up as much as we can and we need to remove at least a half inch from these. So 
So you can see we took a good section of that rib out. We're just gonna go ahead and repeat that process on the other side as best we can. So now that we have our trimming done, we're gonna go ahead and take one side, partial piece of our base plate kit here. Now it is side specific, but it's only gonna go on one way, so it should be pretty easy to determine which side goes where. So now we're just gonna go ahead, set it up into position. This top hole here is gonna line up with a stud that we removed a nut from earlier, and it's just gonna sit like so. And now we're gonna secure it with the factory hardware. So if you remember these longer bolts on the bottom here, we'll be reusing these. You wanna make sure you put some red Loctite on these bolts and the rest of the bolts that we'll be installing here on throughout the installation. And then we have our nut that goes up at the top and that little pocket there. I'm gonna do our best to get some Loctite on that as well. So now that we have part of our base plate kit loosely in position, so you're gonna see this hole here in the back. So we have one side of the hole that's gonna be already drilled out through the frame, but we need to drill out the back side. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take a block of wood, we're gonna shove it up back behind there because there's a whole bunch of wiring harnesses behind the frame. We wanna make sure we don't nick any of those. But once we get that block into position, then we can take a 17, 30 seconds inch drill bit and enlarge the hole to the final size. Now you may want to start a little bit smaller, get a pilot hole and then work your way up, make things a little bit easier for you. So now that we have our hole drilled all the way through, we can take our three inch long hex bolt that comes in our kit apply some Loctite. We're gonna slide that through. And then on the other side, we're gonna secure that with our little circular plate washer, a split lock washer, and then a hex nut. So now that we have this side loosely installed, we'll just go ahead and repeat those same steps on the other side of the vehicle. So now that we have both sides installed, we're gonna go ahead and install our cross section, which bridges this side to this side. So in order to do that, we're gonna get our half inch by one and a half inch long hex bolts ready. We're going to need three of these per side. We're going to take a half inch flat washer, place that over there. So again, you want to get three per side, get these ready, because then we're going to go up and set the cross assembly onto these two side plates and then secure it with the bolts coming from the outside facing in. So now we want to place a couple drops of Loctite on each of our bolts here and then we'll secure them with a split lock washer and then a hex nut. So now we're ready to tighten and torque all of our hardware. We do need to do this in a specific order. The nut up here we are going to tighten first, follow that up with our two bolts down here. Follow that up with our bolt back here. And then once that's all level, we can tighten these, which secure the cross member to our two side brackets. So now we wanna make sure that we level the cross member assembly here before we tighten and torque the side bolts. So now that we have everything tightened and torqued down, now would be a good time to install any other, co other components of your flat toe setup, such as the lighting system or the braking system. For either of those, there's definitely gonna be some stuff you're gonna be mounting towards the front of the vehicle here, so it's a good idea to go ahead and do that now while the bumper's off. But if not, you can go ahead and reinstall everything in the reverse order. Make sure you don't forget to plug in the electrical connectors that we removed earlier. So keep in mind, we do need to reinstall the alarm and when we're doing this, we won't be able to utilize the factory hole that we removed it from. There's gonna be a new hole in the side of our kit here. So we're on the driver's side here. What we wanna do first is we wanna go ahead and plug in the connector there. So again, it should only go in one way. 
Um, I'll get it on the inside here first before we plug that in. So if you can't quite reach it, you may have to go up under the vehicle there and remove a few of those clips to give you a little bit more room to work with. That's what we had to do. But then once we do get it into position here, the outside flange is going to go over the flange there and then we'll simply secure it with our included quarter inch bolt, flat washer, and then nylock nut. And now we'll take an 11 millimeter socket and wrench so we can tighten that down. So the next thing we're going to do is we need to go ahead and trim the fascia here to allow the cutouts or rather the inserts for our base plate kit so we can insert it through the bumper. Before we do any trimming, we want to come to the back side or the inside here. So on either side here, we're going to have two sensors and we're going to have another sensor here. So this is the temperature sensor. It's secured in these holes like so. We want to go ahead and remove that. There's going to be another clip here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tuck it up in here for now. You could even zip tie it to hold it in place. And I'm also going to disconnect these two sensors here. And I'm going to tuck these wires away as well because we're going to be drilling a hole in this area here. So we want to make sure that we don't accidentally drill through any of the wires. So I'm just going to take all of our wires here, tuck them back behind there so they don't get damaged. So now that we know that we have all of our wires out of the way, we're going to flip our fascia back over and then we need to take some measurements over here. We're going to be using this point here. We have a little ridge in our bumper. We're going to be measuring over and then down a little bit until we get our mark. It's going to be the same for either side, but once we get that point, we're going to take a two and a quarter inch drill bit. We're going to go ahead and drill these holes here. So these are what the arms on our base plate kit are going to slide through. So they're pretty easy to drill out. We'll probably come back with a file and clean up all those rough edges. But we're going to do this on the other side as well. So now we're going to remove the lower section of our fascia here. It slides on like that. We're going to have several of those seven millimeter screws that we need to remove. But we're just going to temporarily remove it. We're going to put it back on the fascia before we reinstall it on the vehicle. So you can see here, we need to make some cuts. Now we have a different pattern for the passenger and driver side. There's going to be a diagram in your instructions that will easily allow you to duplicate these same patterns. But once we have them mapped out, we'll go ahead and take some sort of cutting tool here and we can take out the material. Now that we have our cuts made, we'll simply go ahead and reinstall the lower portion onto the fascia. So the next thing we're going to do is, so the two tabs we removed here from this bottom portion of the plastic, we're actually going to be removing the mounting point for those. So we have one on either side. We're just going to flush that up there with the ridge in the plastic. So we actually went ahead and ran all our wires for the breakaway system as well as the wiring harness. So what we're going to do now is we're going to reinstall our fascia. And that's going to do it today for our look and installation of the Roadmaster crossbar style base plate kit here on your 2020 Ford Escape.